Sega have never really been too successful releasing fully functioning Sonic games out of the gate in recent generations, what with Sonic Colours, Sonic Lost World and Sonic Boom all receiving day one patches. Or in the case of Sonic 06 not getting one at all as Sega felt it didn't receive enough sales to warrant a patch, so couldn't be asked to create one. However, back in the 16-bit generation, the ginger-haired stepchild of the franchise at the time had to be Sonic Spinball. With its annoying frame rates and even more frustrating controls, Sonic Spinball only exists thanks to Sega realising they were going to miss the 1993 Christmas release for Sonic 3, so asked the bloke who made the bonus level for Sonic 2 to knock something up in 8 weeks for them. So he showed them Dice's Pinball Dreams and said, I'll make that, but with Sonic in it. That's not a joke by the way. And well, this is what we got. I mean, it's bloomin' impressive for just two months' work, and Sega definitely got their money's worth out of it. Heck, they've re-released the bloody thing 17 times as of the making of this video. So Sonic Spinball was, and still is, literally the poster child of filler material. Anyhow, it seems Sega were a little too hasty to get the game on shelves, and ended up having to recall the game immediately after launch. Why? Well, if you own a physical copy of Sonic Spinball, or any of the incredibly numerous re-releases, this is a tune you'll hear on the title screen. However, if you lived in the US and bought the game day one, you would have heard this. That's right, it's a remix of the Sonic 1 title theme. It's a pretty cool track. So why was it immediately removed? Well, it turns out Sega never bothered checking to see if they even own the rights to the song. In their eagerness to make the original Sonic all hip and edgy with the kits, Sega hired Masato Nakamura of the band Dreams Come True to compose the soundtrack for Sonic 1 and, later on, its sequel. But as per usual lack of communications, Sega Japan never informed Sega of America, who was developing Sonic Spinball, of the ownership. So only after being informed by a Japanese employee just as the game was hitting retail in the US, Sega of America panicked recalling all copies of the game and quickly releasing a re version using a soundtrack knocked up in less than two hours. Legal issues aside, the recall fortunately helped Sega gloss over the fact they had also accidentally published an unfinished beta version of the game, which contained several bugs and was missing the level select code. However, even the intended version Sega of America meant to put out was broken thanks to its rushed development. It wouldn't be until Sonic Spinball's European release that they would finally iron out all the issues the game had, such as a broken soundtrack thanks to its ludicrous two-hour development time. So the Euro version is the one you'll play on most re-releases today. However, the infamous options menu music, the audio equivalent of chewing on a ball of scrunched up aluminium with metal fillings, should actually sound like this. but bizarrely has never been patched in all the years since. Maybe because of its meme-like level of fandom on the internet, or Sega just not being asked to fix such an old game. Coincidentally, this wasn't even the first time Sega had to recall a game because of a copyrighted song. Just two years prior, the Japanese version of Moonwalker had to be recalled as a graveyard level you thriller for the soundtrack without permission. And as with copies of Moonwalker, trying to find the remaining unrecalled copies in the wild is an absolute crapshoot, solely down to the revised version using the exact same box as the original. To the point for years that it was speculated that there were no copies of the original that made it out to retail. So best of luck tracking down a copy, as we're talking Mega Drive Tetris numbers of copies out there. 
Ultimately, Sonic Spinball is one of the first console examples of a game being rushed to launch and blanketed in bugs, glitches and a potentially expensive lawsuit. And in a world when online updates and patching wasn't an option, a costly recall was Sega's only recourse to remedy this rather embarrassing decision. Needless to say, Sega made absolutely sure there wouldn't be any musician drama with the next Sonic release by hiring Michael Jackson. Who's there? Hello you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and until next time friends, I'm missing you already.